Hi, it's Mark from Embedded Pro and I'm back with the second in my video series introducing the NXP LPC 55 S16 EVK. In this video, I'm going to look at some of the key features of the EVK and show you why it's such a great development platform. In my opinion, one of the key features of this evaluation kit is the microcontroller core. It's a Cortex M33 running at 150 megahertz. That's a very high performance for a microcontroller in this cost range. Not only high performance, but the microcontroller also has a very low power consumption. And I'll measure the current that the microcontroller consumes later in this video. The board also has some nice features that I'll investigate. It has high speed and full speed USB, perfect for consumer applications. It has a CAN FD on that D sub connector at the top of the board. And as we learned last time, the board has a Cirrus Logic audio codec, and I'll show you that in operation in just a moment. So the first example I'm going to show you is a USB speaker. In this particular application, we'll program the board to act as a speaker when plugged in by USB to my Mac. My Mac will recognize another audio device and allow us to stream music over the full speed USB connector and output it through the Cirrus Logic codec into a speaker plugged into the line out connector. As well as this, we'll see that the microcontroller is running at 96 megahertz and takes a very low current consumption. As always, I start with MCU Expresso, and now I'm gonna import the SDK for the LPC 55 S16. We can now do this from inside MCU Expresso. Let me accept the user license and download the SDK. The SDK is installed automatically into MCU Expresso. And we're now ready to run the IDE. I'm going to load a built-in SDK project. It's for the LPC 55S16 and it's a USB example and it's the USB device audio speaker. Let me import that into MCU Expresso. The project can be built and downloaded in a debug session to the board without any further changes. In the debug session, MCU Expresso does a probe discovery and detects the link to built into the evaluation kit and the tool will proceed to flash the microcontroller. The application is now flashed to the board, so I can stop the debugger and turn to the hardware. When I connected the evaluation kit to my Mac, my Mac detected a new audio device. And I can stream music to this audio device from my preferred music player in my Mac. The sound you're hearing is the music that I'm playing through the Mac into the evaluation kit and out through the speaker. Let's browse in the code and find out what frequency the microcontroller core is running at. And here in main, I can see that the clock has been configured to run from the free running oscillator 96 megahertz. Let's confirm that by running the clocks tool. First of all, we need to switch to the free running oscillator clock configuration, and we can see that the free running oscillator is routed directly through to the core of the microcontroller. Let me show you how we can measure the power consumption for the microcontroller. There are two relevant power rails, MCU VDD and MCU VBAT, and we can monitor these through JP20 and JP22. Well, here's the board in operation. And in this particular case, we're measuring the current consumption on the VDD rail. We can see that the board's consuming 2.65 milliamps. Turning now to the VBAT rail, VBAT supplies all of the digital logic inside the microcontroller. And we can see that running at 96 megahertz, the microcontroller is consuming an extraordinary 4.46 milliamps. Well, that now completes the audio USB demo, 
And let's turn our attention to CAN on this microcontroller. So this second demo will run the microcontroller at 150 megahertz, and we'll see the CAN FDE in operation. So now I'll close the USB project and I'll import the CAN FD driver example application into MCU Expresso. It's a loopback demo and the CAN messages will be looped back internally to the microcontroller really as a test application. The readme.txt with the project explains what the project does. So let's first build the example project and finally download it to the board through a debug session. Again, we find the link to debug probe. And the example is now flashed to the microcontroller. We can run the example in the debugger and we'll see output from the terminal window as a demo runs. So there we have it. This is CANFD operational on the LPC 55S16 evaluation kit. I wanted to prove that the microcontroller is running at 150 megahertz. So I went into the clock tool and I enabled the clock out pin. I selected the main clock and then a divider of 250 and that should give a 600 kilohertz output clock on the clock out pin when it's being clocked from 150 megahertz internally. Let's see that in operation. I've got my digital multimeter set into frequency measurement and we're reading the clock out pin and we're seeing it's just over 600 kilohertz. That means the core is definitely running at 150 megahertz. Well, what about the current consumption? When I'm running the CAN-FD demo, measuring the current flowing into VBAT, I can see that at 150 megahertz, the board is consuming 7.54 milliamps. I don't know about you, but I'm really, really impressed with that number. It shows the advantage of the 40 nanometer technology that NXP are using. Well, that's it for this video. I've shown you some of the key features of the evaluation kit, USB, CAN FD, high performance 150 megahertz Cortex M33 core, and ultra low power. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. You can share it and like it, and you can always subscribe to my YouTube channel. My next video, I'm really excited to share with you a new ultra low cost Cortex M33 microcontroller board that I've been working on for a number of months. It's going to run at 150 megahertz. It's absolutely tiny, takes very, very little current. And I'll tell you all about it next time.